So this will be a very important video talking about the two hacking stories that make you go, holy cow. The first one with, of course, Amnesty International suing an Israeli spy firm for helping to facilitate the spying of not terrorists, not murderers, not anyone that is a danger to society, but human rights organizations, activists, and journalists. We're going to get into that in just a little bit. But first, I want to get into this Baltimore story because, according to many sources, Baltimore is under a massive cyber attack, which could cripple its governmental infrastructure by hackers who are wanting a Bitcoin ransom. Only, I believe, what is it, 10 Bitcoin or 12 Bitcoin? I forgot what the latest count is. Demanding 12 Bitcoins around that number from the city by Thursday or they will wipe out. Their data. Jason, uh, you found this uh, article, you found this news clip. Uh, there's a video associated with it. And when you're watching the video, the, it's, like, it's like you're watching a, a fictional sci fi movie because holy cow, this is crazy, Jason. This is absolutely insane. Yeah, so people, let's get some things straight right now. Uh, this has been going on for 10 days. It should have been national news. It absolutely has not been. Much like the WhatsApp story, it's very, very hush-hush. And we're going to watch this news clip, and you watch all these officials, and they are dumbfounded. So what's going on? Hackers, unknown hackers, have gained uh, access to the entire infrastructure of Baltimore. We're talking about everything you could imagine, including property sales. They're in a panic. They don't know what to do. So by the end of the day, Today, Friday, supposedly, if they do not get their Bitcoin, some are reporting 10, some are reporting 13, some are saying 92,000, some are saying a little over $100,000. Well, guess what? It's over. They're going to erase all the data. Now, there are problems with this because, hey, what happens if you do pay? Do they not? What if they don't decrypt it? This is the problem with ransomware. But I want to I wanna show you how helpless this city is and how dumbfounded they are. I mean... It's kind of comical. The tenth day of a crippling cybersecurity attack on Baltimore City. Paul Gusser reports on why city officials say they can't say much about the investigation. City Council President Brandon Scott has called for a select committee on city's cybersecurity and their response to this attack. Many questions at this point have not been addressed by city leaders. <laughs> Hackers demanding ransom from Baltimore City have warned the city would lose its data after 10 days. That deadline is Thursday. I think if they delete data, we're going to be in a world of hurt. Chris Sachs is the CEO of ThinkStack, a Baltimore cybersecurity firm. He says if the hackers have access to any backup systems, it could mean trouble. It's still I want to stop it right here. This is the this is the guy that they're going to to secure everything. He's going to break it down in stark detail, much more than the politicians for you guys. Yeah, the politicians politicians are at mercy to this unknown group or just even sole individual. Watch <laughs> this even be a 12-year-old, but we'll, we'll go into that in just a little bit. Let's go. An active crime scene, so they're, they're trying to follow the breadcrumbs and see who did this. Wednesday afternoon, officials struggled to answer questions regarding the city's preparation for a cyber attack like this, any contact with the hackers, and who the city has hired to help them recover. We, we can't address that. There's very little we can say. I can't answer that. Honestly, a lot of the lack of transparency is that they don't know. <laughs> Experts claim hackers demanded 13 bitcoins within 10 days. That's over $100,000. But that demand could keep going up every day after four days. It's a fairly reasonable amount of money in the grand scheme of things to ask for a city. Sachs admits it. <laughs> I love yeah. it. This guy's like, it's pretty reasonable. You guys are going to probably want to pay. Hold on. It gets better, guys. This company has previously paid ransoms for clients to unlock these types of hacks. Still, paying that would not guarantee a solution. You have no idea if that attacker is going to give you what you, what you need. Are they going to give you the decryption key? If they give you the decryption key, is it going to work? How much money are we going to spend to try to decrypt these passwords? And how much risk are we willing to take that the guy won't delete all of those files? To me, for 70000 now 100000 I, I would pay that. The ransomware <laughs> struck citywide, but particularly Wait, the city finance there. department. Pause there, Jason. Uh, 
because they talk about here of kind of legal leaves language. They're talking about this law firm. This law firm previously paid off people to get uh, information back. No, <laughs> uh, they, the people who were threatened paid the ransom. That's pretty much what they're saying. And they just used this firm as a conduit, as a middle person uh, to do that. Uh, it's surprising to see this guy say, hey, uh, you guys have no options here. It's going to cost almost more money to decrypt these passwords with the information that they have on you uh, more than it is just to pay this off. I mean, 10 bit, uh, what is it, 13 Bitcoin that they're asking for? You know, it's a lot of money relatively for an individual, but with the sheer amount of corruption that Baltimore has gone through, it's, it's, a, it's a drop today, in the bucket the compared to all the money that's been funneled in and out there. Yeah, and you know what? This is now, it's kind of funny because uh, the response today, or uh, I'm sorry, yes, uh, yesterday, from the uh, mayor was this. Aggressive Robin Hood attack on the city's computer network is holding up, among other things, online payments, home buying, and email systems. Up until now, Mayor Jack Young has refused to pay the ransom, but when we caught up with him at Pimlico today, he now seems to be leaving the door open to possibly paying the money. Let me just stop that there. For those that don't understand what this really meant, that mean a lot of people couldn't buy their homes. <laughs> <laughs> They're like realty sales were t were were stopped to a halt. Think about how huge that would be in a city like Baltimore. Yeah, seventy thousand, a hundred thousand. That's a pittance. That's not even a house. Forget forget about it. You know how many homes right now these people can't close on. So listen, listen what the mayor has to say. Are we ready? I am thinking. Um, I, right now, I say no. But in order to move the city forward. I might think about it, but I have not made a decision yet. Well, well I think you better up. think quick because uh, the media is not saying what's happened here, Luke. Uh, it's going to be really yeah. interesting to see how that one plays out. Yeah, and anyone could be responsible here. It could be literally a 12-year-old, a group, a government, one man, or it could be an inside job uh, with, of course, the Baltimore government being laden with corruption. And that's an angle to kind of look into here and entertain here. What they will do, it's going to set a very dangerous precedent because uh, either way, it doesn't look good for the city of Baltimore. Uh, and this is why I don't believe in centralized systems and I don't believe in government institutions, but that's a whole other argument that we could make here. That's my own personal opinion. But moving forward into this latest story, uh, which again makes you go holy cow we are getting that an israeli spy firm is being sued by amnesty international for again spying and tracking on there and many people are saying this is directly connected to the recent whatsapp uh cyber uh, hack scare where now whatsapp is telling everyone to immediately go update their whatsapp if you haven't updated your whatsapp update it right now i remember what was it a day ago two days ago uh, my friends coming to me be like, hey, man, uh, update your WhatsApp uh, really quickly. Uh, you know, I, I updated it. You know, I was like, w I wonder what is happening here, where this uh, larger kind of scare is coming from. What's the real reason that this is happening? And it looks like this lawsuit uh, sheds a light. And I, I, bl I do believe that there's a connection here uh, between the WhatsApp cyber scare recently and, of course, this latest lawsuit by Amnesty uh, International, Jason. Yeah, so here we go. Amnesty, uh, Amnesty International is saying that uh, the NOS group, which is an Israeli spy firm with Pegasus Software, has directly targeted them. Now, this group um, of NOS, right? They've always said, no, 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 we're only going to get the terrorists. We work with the government. That's why this is an Israeli-linked group. They try everything they can do to try to say, hey, this isn't an Israeli operation. It's not an Israeli operation. It's not an Israeli operation. What operation is this then? So who's being targeted? It's not terrorists. And once they hack your phone, Luke, by the way, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of differing info on what this hack is. So some people are saying that it can infect your phone just from a missed WhatsApp call. So that's literally someone getting your WhatsApp info, trying to make contact with you. You do nothing, and it infects it. Now, in this article, they talk about .net, .cu, .co.uk phishing. So if it was a .com, maybe they're going to send you a link. Once you click on that link, it's over. They have full access to your uh, phone. What is full access yeah. to the little magic box in your, uh, in your hand go? Well, it gives them all your cloud information, anything you've ever uploaded, access to your camera, 
all the time in real time, access to your microphone all the time in real time, access to your GPS data all the time in real time, all your phone calls, all your text messages, all your social media activity. Think about that. I mean, yeah, this is it incredible. Becomes, it becomes a literal spying device. Uh -huh. You don't need spies anymore chasing you or looking after you or watching you. you pretty much have it in your, in your pocket many of the times. Uh, and of course, uh, the lawsuit is happening in, in Israel and Am Amnesty International is claiming that 50 of its members and supporters were targeted. Uh, all, of course, support of the Amnesty International community. Uh, and they're calling uh, the Minister of Defense in Israel to ban NSO's Pegasus software, uh, which, again, this software is knowingly out there that could covertly take control of your phone, copy all of its data, turn the microphone into a surveillance device. And again, this group was founded in 2010. And they're the industrial leading kind of surveillance software company that only is supposed to give the software to governments for only terrorism and serious crime. But guess what? It's not being uh, the allegations here are that it's being used against activists, journalists, and of course, this human rights uh, group organization. Uh, this is uh, allegedly happening in a number of countries. And, uh, you know, the staffers here detail how they got a very suspicious, uh, suspicious message over WhatsApp. According to the Alpha David here, uh, that was uh, made public to everyone, uh, pretty much talking about a protest against Saudi Arabia. They also had some links in there. Um, and if people clicked on the link, that was another aspect of, of ways that they were able to subvert well, them. But this, this is a group. That is a non-government organization from the United Kingdom that is focusing on, on human rights. And again, uh, why? Why is this uh, even have to have to be discussed? So they detail in length about how they were sent all these links. Uh, but to me, this doesn't surprise me because as we've been documenting time and time again, whenever big centralized government institutions say that they want to crack down on crime, they want to stop terrorism, they actually do the opposite of that, and they pretty much go after their critics. They go after whistleblowers. They go after people who tell the truth about them and how they're doing it all based on a lie. Those are the persona non grata. Those are the number one enemies of the state. And, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if everything here is corroborated with what Amnesty International is claiming, Jason. Well, you know, I just want to also point out that, you know, although this is Israeli software, like you said, it is a private uh, company, it was recently acquired, at least the majority stake, um, out of London. But this software is, what, licensed? And it's, it's licensed to their allies. So when they're saying they're fighting terrorism, you know, the Israelis work with who? The Saudi Arabians. And the Saudi Arabians did license this software back in 2017. So when you look at this, you know, this is very much a tool of the shadow forces behind, you know, the military industrial complex, the track trace database society that is global. That's not just our NSA. Think about that. This technology allows foreign actors, governments, our allies, if you will, Luke, to access any American citizen's phone that happens to have that vulnerability. You got WhatsApp, you didn't update it. These guys have access to it, guys. And believe me, there are different levels and different ways uh, which organizations get this. This software is really, really scary because, again, if it can just be accessed by a missed call, how would you ever know? How would you ever know, Luke? Yeah, it's terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. And again, the public PR thing is we need this. We need the security. We need the surveillance to keep you safe. That's not that's not what it's being used for. Come on now. Uh, that's an absolute lie. Uh, we're seeing so many important ramifications. We saw another important case of what happened in France recently uh, with whistleblowers uh, and journalists getting government documents in France talking about the French involvement in the Yemeni war. Uh, those French journalists are facing severe repercussions are facing jail time for reporting the truth about the government. This is what it's ultimately about. This is what the Chelsea Manning case is about. This is what the Julian Assange case is about. You either care about freedom, transparency, uh, you know, the, the, the ability to live your life without an overwhelming force telling you what you can and cannot do, trying to crush you for doing the morally right thing. What, what, what kind of world and example are we going to uh, give if we don't stand up for these basic principles uh, and actually start caring about them and actually start talking about them rather than all the other divisive
of bullcrap nonsense out there that is meant to play on your ego, play on your emotions, play on your psychology to make you look the other way as to really screwing everyone else over, taking all the power and all the money and all the resources and all the influence away from us. That's a little rant there. Sorry, but that's what I believe. And if you believe that too, share this video. You guys don't understand how important you guys are when it comes to uh, getting this content out there. If it wasn't for you, uh, th these videos wouldn't be seen by, by anyone because, again, they don't get recommended. They don't get shared uh, by, the, of course, the technocratic uh, bigger monopolies out there. And, and that's because we're, we're very, very critical of them. And it shouldn't surprise anyone that this is happening. So you guys are more important than ever. Other than that, Jason, I got nothing else to say. Do you want to close it off here? Guys, we're doing four videos a day except for on Saturday where we're doing two videos a day across two separate platforms, News for a Change, and We Are Change. Make sure you are subscribed. You hit that thumbs up. It helps us out so much. You share this on social media. And most importantly, you get out there and be the change you want to see in the world.